Okay, it's the end of session. I'm here with my buddy Cinder. Cinder is a six month old pup. Um, uh, I would say like pity mix of some sort, but she's a beautiful girl. Um, and this is her roadmap to success. So when I first came in, she was a little bit nervous and anxious about me. Uh, she was in the kennel um, and uh, the guardian was kind of closing the door a couple times. Um, and I think that uh, that's called a negative punishment when we deduct something. In this case, he was deducting her access to run free. And that can create a little frustration. All aggression comes from, uh, from fr uh, stress and frustration can lead to stress. She's tired. We've just got done doing the loose leash walking video or the uh, reactivity video above. So um, basically what I would do is before guests are coming over, if you can, do a little bit of the fetch that we talked about on the stairs or whatever, and get her a little exercise to kind of set her up for success. Give her, make sure she always has 10 minutes of rest after the exercise ends before the next thing happens, otherwise she'll be worse behaved. So then um, what I do is I would practice in the kennel, and I show the guardians this towards the end of the session, Put, have her go in the kennel, come up with a name for the kennel. So we call it Hawaii. Show her you have a treat, say Hawaii, throw the treat in the kennel. When she puts all four paws in there, say yes, then she licks up the treat. Then I would have another treat and hold it through the side of the kennel, the doors at the end of the kennel. So hold the treat on the side so she can see it. So you're preventing her from exiting the kennel. She could, the door's open. We're using the treat to keep her there. And then basically I asked her for a down and then I, and then I was uh, I smashed the treat and I was opening and closing the door. So she's seeing the door open and closing while she's nibbling on the treat and she's content to stay there, force-free kennel training. And so eventually you get to the point where you can, and you're practicing this without somebody at the door. So eventually what happens is we come, we practice this a lot. Maybe it's just the kids are sitting here quietly or maybe the kids are gone. And we keep on practicing. We want to go as, as stimulus rich an environment as you can without the dog failing. If the dog fails, it's too, too advanced. So you lower the intensity or the distractions or whatever until the dog can achieve it. And then basically what I did is I had the door open. I had her lay down. She was in the kennel, the door was open. And I was holding the treat off to the side. And I was just kind of waiting for one second. And then uh, I was using the treat to keep her there. And then I said, uh, her word is break. I threw this word and said break in front of the kennel, which she exited. So the idea is after we do that a couple times, then we wait for two seconds. So we're holding the treat off to the side to kind of keep her there. If she starts kind of listing, maybe you lower the treat towards her a little bit. And then after two seconds, you toss it. And we go very, very gradually and progressively. So eventually we get to the point where you can open that door and she's waiting there. For, she's practiced waiting in there for 10, 15 seconds, 20 seconds. Then you throw the word, uh, throw the treat and say break at the same time or break and then throw the treat. So eventually she knows break means I exit the kennel. So every time you let her out of the kennel, do this exercise, practice the exercise like just tried when nobody's here, and then eventually practice it with like somebody that she knows but she's not super duper excited about. And uh, you can also wait for her to calm down the kennel, but sometimes that'll backfire. Sometimes that creates frustration. So you have to kind of decide what's gonna be best for Cinder. But the idea is we wanna gradually work her up so when we open the door, Cinder is restraining herself and staying inside the kennel rather than racing out. And then we're telling her when she can leave. And this is not a dominance thing. This is to help her practice a little self-restraint, self-control, but also so that you as the guardian can recognize her energy is down. She's at level seven. That's too high to let her out. I let the energy come down to about a five or four, three. Okay, then I'm going to let you out. So then, but you have to practice and work up to that point. I think dogs have 10 levels of energy. Zero is asleep. 10 is as crazy as you've seen them. Once you get past level five, it's really hard for them to listen. So whether you're playing with them, walking with them, uh, playing tug of war or a fetch or anything, anytime they get above level five energy, stop. Wait for the energy to come down to like a two and then go back to practicing again. Letting them practice uh, too uh, high energy when they're playing or any activity is going to make it harder for them to listen. Okay, we started off the exercise, uh, the session by going over marker words. The guardians already used the word yes, so we load, did a loading exercise. We used in the clicker. I'd like the guardians to use the clicker when we're outside uh, doing the exercise like the uh, exercise we did above. And if you can, try to find yourself one of these little uh, hand deals. So I remember you have to click right away. So I can be hands free, and then if I need to click, I can usually get it out and click yes <laughs> within two seconds. Um, I'm not going to click to get you to come. You shouldn't do that. You should never click for attention. Click is for the action. So it comes the instant the dog does the thing that I want, unless the thing I want has duration. Like for example, the video we shot outside. So eventually if we're worked up to the point where we don't have to drop treats every two feet, we walk all the way past the dog, then we would go click and then give Cinder that treat. So we're marking. I like it when you pass all the dog, pass the dog's threshold without barking. I click and give you a treat. Now at the end of the, uh, after we shot the video outside, there was a neighbor outside who has a uh, dog. Now, if you're out and about, I prefer that you find the park like I described in the video above. But if you're out and about, every time she sees another dog, if you click the instant she looks at the dog, she's gonna turn and look at you, once you use the clicker enough, to get that treat. What is she doing? 
she is disengaging from the dog. So if the camera's the dog, I'm kind of wandering around. I look up and the treat comes from here. Eventually what will happen is she's looking at the dog, she'll look away automatically anticipating the treat because we practice. We made it a classically conditioned response. I look at a dog and I look away from the dog and I get a treat from my humans. What is she doing? She's disengaging and not reacting. Now from what I saw, it seemed like she was interested in playing with the dog and anxious about that and not aggressive towards the dog, which is a much better situation to see. Now, I'm only seeing one, a snapshot of one dog, you know, sniff my feet. Um, so the guardian said uh, that she, her perception was that it was for play and not for uh, aggression. But she did show me a couple of times during the session, she was a little bit insecure, a little bit fearful, which is not unusual. She's a six month old puppy. Um, it would be nice if she could be in a puppy class um, where they get to play with other puppies. But if she's, usually we do, the way that I do my class, we're teaching for 45 minutes and so we have 15 minutes of play at the end. That might be too much for her. Um, but the idea is, again, we want to get her, follow the video, I don't want to go over the video above because it's already there, but you want to get her around other dogs where she's not reactive and gradually collapse the distance. That's really a summation of what we were doing in the video above. Okay, um, so uh, we also went over celebrating and manners. Manners is if she were to come up and nudge me, I would say sit, yes. So if she was nudging me, she's saying, Give me your attention, which is not a bad thing, but she's not saying it in the most polite way. I ask her to sit. When she sits, I say, the mark, if she, I say it once. And if she sits, I say the mark word, and then I pet her under the chin, on the chest, or on the shoulders, and give her some attention. If I say sit and she doesn't sit, I just go back to making some art, reading some emails, playing a video game, whatever it was I was doing. I'm not punishing or correcting the dog, and I'm not asking multiple times. Playing hard to get works great for dating, or works great for dog training. Eventually, she'll learn, I need to come and sit in front of you or lay down to get attention. Those are the two things I ask for. Don't ask for a shake. And after a while, she'll start sitting down to say, please, can you pet me? When she does, you bet your butt, you better pet her. Otherwise, she's going to go back to the other activities. Remember, dogs get uh, all attention is trying to, uh, uh, all behavior is trying to achieve something, and all attention is validating. So if we were rewarding her celebrating the things that she does that we want, which is the other thing we talked about, the other side of the coin, she's going to start sitting to ask for attention by essentially prepaying for that attention. So remember, every time she sits, looks at you, lays down, goes to the uh, Hawaii, if that's where you call the kennel, goes to her dog bed, um, drinks water, um, mark it at the end of that, and, and pet her. Um, and after a while, if you know she's going to go drink water, if you want to sign a cue, we went over cues too, I say happy hour. My dog goes and drinks water. My friends laugh about that. I like using fun cues. So how did I do that? Every time I, I see my dog going to drink water, I say happy hour. I say it's a precedent. I say that word before the action. And so after a while, it becomes a cue. The dog hears happy hour means I should go drink water. And so it's helpful, you know, for whatever it is. You don't want to say sit, 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 sit. You're, the more you say it, the less you mean it. And you're going to train your dog to not listen for you. And you're going to devalue the word. So if you keep on telling your kids, go make your bed, go make your bed, go make your bed, and nothing else happens, well, I don't have to make my bed, nothing else happens. Go make your bed or you're going to lose your iPad privilege. Oh, well, I don't want to lose iPad. I'm going to go make my bed. Um, that's actually an example of something called a premac. A premac principle means that a less desirable behavior earns me more desirable behavior. Did you do your homework? Once you do your homework, then you can play, watch TV. That's a premac. I don't want to do my homework, but I do want to watch TV. So I'll do my homework to earn the right to uh, watch TV. So a premac that you do for the dog is telling her to sit before you reach to open the kennel or lay down before you reach to open the kennel. And if she doesn't, then you just sit there and hang out. Now, I don't want her bouncing off the walls, but if it, that's why, again, putting her in there practicing going in and out of the kennel when there's nobody here helps her practice the behavior. Eventually, you walk over there, she just sits or lays down because that's what you always do before you let me out. And sitting and laying down are a little bit more passive positions. I also tell dogs to sit before I prepare their food. If they, don't, if they don't sit, then I put the food up and I just can do my thing, wait for them to kind of settle down, then ask for a sit again. Maybe wait a couple minutes. And then keep on doing this. And eventually, as soon as the dog sits, then I start preparing their food. Then I put the, or before I put the harness on, put the leash on before I open the door. So after a while, the dog starts to learn, I have to listen to my humans. And when I do listen to my humans, something awesome happens. I get what I want. And if I don't, there's no punishment, but I'm not getting what I want. So that motivates the dog to do what you want without giving them treats. Treats are important. You should always give your dog treats for stuff. Some dogs won't take treats, so be happy if your dog takes treats. And, uh, uh, yeah, uh, we don't want to ever get to the point where we don't give our dog treats. We're not giving them more inconsistently, um, but always use that marker word. So celebrate and uh, manners are the two sides of the coin. Celebrating is when the dog offers a behavior that you did not ask for but is desirable. You say the word, marker word and pet them. Manners is if the dog is asking attention in a way that is not polite 
we tell them to sit or to lay down, not shake. And if they want to, if they do it, we say the mark word and give them what they want. Now, if they, they sit, uh, or they come up and paw at you, say sit, and they sit and you pat them for a second. They come over here, paw at you again, paw at you again. I'm bored. I'm, I want more attention. So you can pet the dog longer, or you might go to the stairs and do the fetch up and down the stairs that we talked about. Remember, each dog needs about an hour's worth of exercise every day. She be a little bit of a higher energy dog, so she probably needs a little bit more as a puppy. So it's not, we, right now the guardian's taking for a really long walk, and what happens is she comes home and basically does this. We don't get to enjoy her at like 70% energy level. She goes from 100% to 20% and sleeps. We don't, and then we don't get to have, she's not practicing the behavior energy style the, uh, range that we want because we're just not allowing her to achieve it. Most of us are reactive when it gets dogs exercise. When you're a parent, you are proactive in getting your children sleep. I'd like you to be proactive about getting her exercise. So sniff walks, as long as it's safe to do so. Drive her into a place, you know, a, a neighborhood where there's open lawns and not as many dogs or a big park is better. Um, playing tug of war, playing fetch. When we're playing fetch, remember you say fetch as you throw it. When she brings you the ball back, hold the treat out, wait for her to drop it, say yes, put the treat in her mouth. Then you can do a pre-mac for that. Pick up the ball and say sit. When she sits, throw the ball, say fetch and throw the ball again. So now you're adding an extra element of, I don't want to say control, but like, you know, tipping her hat or respect to you is yes, I'm going to say, I'm going to sit before you throw it. That's practicing a desired behavior and also practice a little self-control and helps her settle herself down a little bit. So uh, also playing tug of war. So tug, 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 when your energy level gets to level five, pull out a treat, hold it to her nose. When she uh, lets it go, say yes, pop the treat in her mouth, ask her for a sit. Wait for that energy to come down. She gets, starts walking around, pull out five treats. Tell her sit. Yes. Actually, I would tell her sit. Yes. Give her that treat. Sit. If she gets up, sit. Yes. And take two seconds before I deliver that treat. You're holding a treat here in front. She knows it's coming. And if she starts jumping, that's too big of an interval. But you gradually work your way up to three seconds, five seconds, seven seconds. So she's settling herself down and getting some nice energy. Settling herself down, I like that. When she is calm like this, this would be a good time to pet her from the nape of her neck to the base of her tail and say, settle, zen, whatever the word is you wanna use. Say the word once, I say settle, chill, whatever you wanna say, and it's a very relaxing pet. If she's worked up, don't do that. Also, you can pet her in slow circles on her chest. That's very calming and relaxing for a lot of dogs. Um, there's also, um, uh, uh, I forgot to show you the, 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 the I like the, a different sort of uh, snuffle mat. Feeding her out of a snuffle mat and treat dispensing toys like the Omega Tricky Treat Ball. Um, the, the thing that looks like a Kong is it's like a wobble thing. Uh, puzzles are great, they ordered a puzzle, but I don't like the slider puzzles because dogs, she seems smart, she'll figure it out after five times, it's really not much of a challenge. The snuffle mat is a challenge every time. It slows down feeding, she boosts her confidence because she earns her food, and uh, it tires her out because she's using her nose. Um, same thing with the, the Omega Treat Ball. She's rolling it around. She's solving a problem. Um, getting a, a lick mat and putting a peanut butter on it when you're eating dinner, putting it in the kitchen or maybe somewhere where it's smooth. Uh, or when guests are over, she's licking that and making it feeling good and comfortable uh, and while releasing those endorphins. Uh, let me see, what else do we go over? Um, a cookie in the corner. So that's the throwing the treats. If you forget how to do that one, message me and I can uh, put a link of it in your write up above. Um, and, but that's the introduction to scent games. I'd like you to Google scent games when you watch this, S-C-E-N-T, scent games for dogs. There's a whole bunch of, sometimes you'll take a, like a cotton ball and put lavender oil on it and then tape it inside a, a solo cup and put three solo cups on the ground and three card Montium and put them there and she goes and nudges the right one, you say yes, and then uh, give her a treat. So now she's using her nose to find that scent. There's a whole bunch of different scent games. It's a very simple one. There's a whole bunch of them out there. Now don't be tripped out if it talks about bringing a cadaver into your home. You can do scent games without bringing dead animals into your house. But the, eventually maybe the kids hide in closets or we're hiding treats around. But using her nose drains a lot of energy. So try to find three or four scent games so you can practice those in your house. Maybe again, before a walk, just make sure she has 10 minutes of rest. Um, so find a, uh, come up with a schedule. Ideally, getting her exercise every three or four hours is ideal, but try to schedule it so that come up with something reasonable so you can do that on a regular basis. I'd like to see her getting maybe three or four 
uh, uh, physical exercise activities that take five to 15 minutes each one, and maybe uh, three to five scent uh, or uh, mental stimulation exercises. So we're feeding through four times out of the day out of a snuffle mat. That would be one. Doing the cookie in the corner would be another one, another scent game. And then maybe we're playing fetch up and down the stairs. And then maybe a couple hours later, we're playing tug of war. And then we do a walk. So we're satiating, getting her the exercise and, and uh, stimulation she needs to drain her energy so she's not bouncing off the walls. Now, when you uh, I signed you up for the puppy class stuff, so you'll be getting a lot of emails. you get the hurricane. When you start coming home, have treats in your car. Every time you come home, hurricane. And make sure the kids and nobody rushes. So when she comes in, she's looking to do those circles at the door. Let's give her an alternative behavior than jumping up on people. Um, or the guess which hand game. Um, or when she come in, I have some treats, sit. Yes. Down. Yes. Yes, see how much that's getting your attention? But the idea is when I, every time I come in the door, you ask me to do about five or seven things that require me to have some self-control and to listen to you, and I'm rewarded for listening to you. So I want to do that, and I'm practiced at doing that. And the more she does that, dogs are not programmable, but they're very much creatures of habit. The more they do something, the more they're likely to continue doing something. Um, now, if you go uh, to my uh, website, uh, I believe the write-up I have right now, I can't remember, with, uh, it's with a doodle, uh, but it, it's like how uh, tips to t stop a dog from pulling on a leash. I'm doing it in the living room. I did the exercise with you guys outside. In the, with the other video, you'll see I did it in a person's living room. So remember, we want to practice in the easiest environment that we need, or the hardest environment, but as easy as we can so the dog learns the skill there first. So maybe you're practicing walking back and forth the hallway here and then a T this way. And she gets used to that motion without being super distracted, without those sounds and sights of being outside. Then you do it in your courtyard before you actually exit your courtyard area. So again, a more controlled environment. Then you practice in an area away from other dogs. And remember, I would like to see a week's worth of practicing going backwards. Practice in like three to five minute practice sessions. Just walk backwards, drop the treat, and say yes before the dog looks up the treat. So you're marking the dog coming towards you. And don't stop in between each treat. Eventually, you're walking two steps, and the dog's following with a nice loose leash, and you drop that treat at your feet. Eventually, you're going to do that turn, but that's only when you get the second leash, second week only if she's doing well. When you drop it, always drop it behind you. If you drop it in front, you're going to teach your dog to walk in front of you. That's really a foundational exercise for loose leash walking. Remember, we want to let her sniff and explore things on walks because that means she's not looking for the boogie dog. Um, let me see. Um, i trying to think. Is there anything else we covered that you want me to go over? I think that's about it. Um, so now if you have any, uh, watch this one, uh, clients that get the best response, usually watch this video uh, maybe once a week for a couple weeks until really everything I've gone over, you're like, yep, we're, we're doing all those things. Then you're kind of done with this one. Watch the video of, of the technique above. Message me, text me if you have any questions or problems. I'm here for you. I can only help you if you let me know. If I don't hear from you, I assume that means everything's going great. So don't wait until you have three questions. I get clients that like, well, you never call me back and they like, we're waiting to come up with three questions before they text me. I didn't even know they needed help. I'm always available for you, so please let me know. If I have to come out for my, I charge my time, but I have all these videos I can help you with, like I said, for cooking in the corner and a lot of these things that you're actually getting in puppy class. All right, can you sit for me? How about we sit over here so they can see what a good looking girl you are? Actually, this is a good illustration of hand targeting. Sit. Yes. Well, this handsome girl is uh, Cinder. And this is, and I'm David, this is Cinder's Roadmap to Success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it.